What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan, and I am here to do my video for the playoffs and how to get there along with the updated draft order. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we're going to start off with the draft order as we usually do. So from Tankathon, Detroit still at the top spot. Then you have the 2-11 and 11 Jacksonville Jaguars and Houston Texans, followed by the 3-10 and 10 Jets. A couple 4-9 and nine teams, Chicago, but, but the Giants have that pick. Uh, Giants have their own pick. Then you get Seattle going to the Jets at 5-8, and eight, Carolina 5-8. and eight. All these 6-7 and seven teams, including us, where you finally get to us, we round out the top 10. So Philly is going to currently, as of right now, have um, a top 10 pick from us. Um, obviously pending the rest of the season and how the last few games go. We're obviously hoping to win out so that way we have a chance to make the playoffs and also drop that pick down. If we did make the playoffs, it would and and you know, if we were to make the playoffs and lose in the wild card round, it would be somewhere in here. If we just fall just shy of the playoffs, it would be around here. If we only end up winning you know, God forbid, if we lose the rest of our games and went six and eleven, then it would probably end up being somewhere eh, back end of top ten, I would think, at six and eleven, or maybe even you know eleven or twelve, something in there. So just to kind of give you an idea of the range and how it would probably end up falling, and then of course we drop down here. And we currently pick at 22 overall because San Francisco did just win this past week. And I've been saying, you know, for, well, since the beginning of the season, I've thought, I've thought and felt that the San Francisco 49ers were going to be a playoff team, but they were going to be, you know, a wild card team. Now, will they win in the wild card? I don't know. They could, but I don't know that they've got that much, you know, um, strength on offense and the defense is all right. I think they still need a little ways to go, you know, another year before they're ready to push past the wild card, um, at least. But I do think that they are a solid wild card team right now. Um, and so I think that their pick is going to likely, at the end of the season, fall somewhere between 19 and 24. It's currently 22. All right. Now, with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the NFL playoff predictors. I actually need to real quick pull up one other one okay so as usual i'm going to start with the current standings and you will see here that as it is the new england patriots do still currently lead uh well okay so it's funny because at the beginning of the season, I felt like Buffalo was going to win the division, and but I did think that the Patriots were going to be a wild card team. Funny enough, as it's turning out, Patriots are probably going to win the division at this point, and um, you know Buffalo. I still think Buffalo is going to make it in as a wild card because I do think the Bills will at least make it to ten and set uh, ten. Uh, yeah, ten and seven because they have. Uh, you know, a few pretty easy games down the stretch that they should be able to win. But look, the Bills, and I know so many people are like, oh, look, the Bills suck. And they, the, the reason why the Bills are struggling, they have a phenomenal defense and their offense is great, except they have literally no run game. And all they do is pass the ball. And Josh Allen is a phenomenal quarterback. He is. But the problem is, is you, look, I'm just a person who likes balance and everything in life, right? And so I like to have some balance there. You got to have, but even like the fact to kind of juxtapose a little bit, completely different situations. And, you know, I'm not doing a comparison of the two players, but Tua and his ability to overcome the lack of run game in an RPO based system is phenomenal because it shouldn't work at all considering the fact that we have no fucking run game. Um, but he's remarkable in his ability to to elevate the offense because he's so damn good at it. He's got that quick release, his ability to manipulate the pocket, etc. Right. So anyway, um, I just think the Bills they need to get a run game. They need to they you know they need to invest in a running back probably in in the first or, or you know second round. Uh, of the you know upcoming draft, they need to get a running game. Singletary solid. They have you know one or two. Breda's okay, right? But like, just like the Dolphins, they need. So 
I, I think people are like, as usual, getting in their emotions and fucking going crazy. I mean, look, you know, KC and Tennessee, I told people, you know, their struggles throughout the season. I mean, Tennessee's been super banged up this year. Super banged up. They have like 30 some odd, almost 40 players on injured reserve. They are starting to get some guys back, which is a potential issue for the Dolphins for when we play them. But like, people need to calm down and stop with these, like... I, that's the thing, bro, is is like, I'm just not that kind of person. And if I'm keeping it real, that's part of the reason why people don't like watching my channel because I don't go with the fucking, you know, emotions and I don't flip flop and I don't, you know, go with the extremes of the waves. Like I take everything into account all the time. I never leave anything out and I tend, I tend to have a more balanced uh, approach and evaluation of things. So, you know, I told people, look, the Titans, the Chiefs, yeah, they're, they're having some struggles, but they're going to be fine. I still think Baltimore is going to be fine. Like, you know, we'll see the status of Lamar Jackson. Obviously, he came out of this last game, but they said it's not a serious injury. It's an ankle injury, but they said it's not serious. Um, you know, but, you know, and I've talked about it. Like, Lamar Jackson, he just needs to improve on him. He's not, you know, he doesn't suck now all of a sudden. He's not a bust. He just needs to improve in being a pocket passer. Patrick Mahomes, he needs to get better at, you know, taking what defense. Apparently, he gets, needs to get better at reading defenses um, from what's been reported and what he said. So, you know, it is what it is. He's a young quarterback, right? But he needs to get better at that and then taking what the defense gives him instead of always just having to rely on the big play down the field. Like, it's not always sustainable, right? And obviously the league's eventually going to catch up, which it has. So as a young quarterback, they need to grow and adjust. Justin Herbert, same thing. Whatever, you get the point. Like, people just get in there. That's the problem personally, if I'm keeping it real, that I have with a lot of people in general. I know I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it is relevant and important to say because people just need to stop playing with their emotions, right? They, they That's, you know, whatever. I The players, they play with their emotions and that actually can, you know, be a good thing. It also can be a bad thing if you draw penalties and stuff. But probably different phrasing there people need to not evaluate with their emotions they need to evaluate the full picture and realize you know the reasons why things are going on and what the problems and issues are and you know figure out the probability of whether or not they can be fixed and and so on and so forth but anyway like i said i mean I told people, and I also told people that Indy was better than what their early season record showed, too. They were pretty banged up early on in the season, whatever, right? So, like, you know, look, anyway, okay, enough of that. You get the point. I mean, just, I, I want people to have, and that's part of the reason why I do my show and my channel is because I want people to have all of the information, all of the data, and have a, a, a balanced evaluation. Just go where the data and the facts take you. Don't, you know, don't try and force it into any one direction because that's what you want or that's what's fun and exciting or, you know, fit is, you know, tickles your, your emotional fancy. Like, just take emotions out of it and do the proper evaluation. All right, so anyway. This is where it currently stands right now. New England at the top in the first seed with Tennessee and KC and Baltimore all still leading their divisions. And then you have the Chargers, the uh, the Colts, the Bills rounding out the wild card spots with Cleveland, Cincinnati, Denver, Pittsburgh, and Vegas all ahead of us in the lineup. So we are technically in the hunt, but... We still have a long way to go. And again, even if we do make it 10 and 7 and run the table, which is going to be super hard to do, but even if we manage to do that, then we still need a significant amount of help. I think it's somewhere between 75 to 80 percent probability that we make it to the playoffs at 10 and 7, but we need a bunch of tiebreakers. Where, like, for example, the Bills, if the Bills were to get to only 10 and 7 the remaining way, I think that they could because they would have tiebreakers over a lot of these other teams, including us, right? So um, anyway, so look, at the end of the day, as of right now, the Dolphins still 100% have to win out in order to be able to make it to the playoffs. So now let's actually jump into my scenario. Let me uh, just double check really quick and make sure that week 14 is 
correct and up to date. So it does appear as that is the case, right? Yep. Okay, good. So everything is up to date and obviously week 15 and on has been, you know, um, I... I actually, I watched Doug just, I think he just did his first one of the season, if I'm not mistaken. And I love watching Doug's channel and he does a really good job. Uh, I, you know, I think people think that I don't like him, which I find to be ridiculous just because I, you know, there are a couple takes of his that I didn't agree with. And I've mentioned him once or twice on my channel and brought him up in the context of disagreeing with him. And you know, people took it the wrong way or whatever, but it's really just because I watch a lot of his stuff. So when I think about, you know, the other people that have said things on the subject, he's one of the top people that comes to mind because I watch a lot of his stuff. So anyway, Doug just did his and he, you know, he actually went through, you know, week by week and, you know, did the, did his picks for the viewers or whatever. Um, and played it out. I did it ahead of time because at the end, the, the reason why I did that, I, I would do it more like how Doug did it because then you kind of get to see how it plays out. But at the end of the day, I guess it's my fault though because I went into the situation knowing that the Dolphins had to win out in order to make it to the playoffs. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. There's really no chance. There's almost no reasonable chance that the Dolphins make it in at nine and eight if they lose even one more game down the stretch and they could lose you know a few more games down the stretch they could lose two or three games that last three game stretch is going to be tough in particular right so you know if they lose even one more game then their their odds just absolutely right so like for it goes from like 10 and 7 is like 75 to 80 percent Obviously, we still need that other 25, 20 to 25% of the way. We need that help from other teams, right? And certain things to happen. But if we only go 9 and 8 on the season, then that drops down to like 1% or like 5% or somewhere in there, right? It's precipitous, right? It drops dramatically. So the Dolphins absolutely have to win out. In order and so that I kind I guess it's a little bit my fault because I assume that like you know everybody just understood that and knew that but at the same time there are a, a ton of Dolphins fans that you know they think that we're gonna win out make it to the playoffs and then make it to the Super Bowl so look you know do I hope that happens would it be phenomenal would I love to watch that would it be super exciting it, it literally it's never been done either either in in the history of the NFL. There's never been a team that started one and seven, turned it around, and made it to the playoffs. So if we were then to do that and then somehow make it from the wild card to the divisional to the conference round and then all the way to the Super Bowl, yeah, obviously I'd be ecstatic. That'd be wonderful. I would love to see it. But I'm a realistic person, and the probabilities of that happening are super low. And I'm sorry, I'm not one of those people that can just have faith that it's going to happen. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not, you know. So, And I'm never going to be. It is what it is. So take that for what you will. And take that for what you will. So anyway, so getting back to it, though, now we are on my uh, version of it where everything week 15 through week 18 has been randomized. I went through and I changed things where I saw fit. And then this is where I have it. So if the Dolphins, um, if the Dolphins win out and make it 10 and 7 as things currently stand through week 14, and then how I've picked them the rest of the way, they will make it in as the seventh seed. Um, real quick before I do, you know, just check to see if we could lose any game going down the stretch to see if it changes. Before I do that, I do want to talk about the games this past week. So um, first and foremost, what the Dolphins need to happen at this point, generally speaking. Now, there may be a little bit, depending on the matchups and stuff like that, there may be a little bit of a, a disparity at some points, but generally speaking, the first rule of thumb for how the Dolphins can get to the playoffs is they need the division leaders, the top four teams. So that's, well, hang on. Let's go back to who it is currently. Um, 
I mean, it actually doesn't change from my situation, but it's currently the Patriots, the Titans, the Chiefs, and the Ravens. We need the division leaders to win. And then we need 5 through 12. So uh, the Chargers, the Colts, the Bills, the Browns. The Browns just got hit heavy with COVID this week. So there is a chance they could be out a ton of players, including Baker Mayfield. Um, uh, Cincy... Uh, Broncos, Steelers, and Raiders. We need all of these teams to lose. That's the general rule of thumb. Again, there may be a little bit of a disparity depending on the actual matchups, but let's go ahead and go forward. And so, um, so that's the first rule of thumb. Now let's take a look if there's any chance that the Dolphins could lose a game and make it to the playoffs. So nine and eight. If we lose to the Jets, no, that drops us out. We are now in the ninth seed, as you can see here. Let me actually drag this to the other side. That makes more sense so you can see all of this stuff. I don't know why I didn't do that before. Um, not just in this video, but in the previous videos. It's funny, too, because Doug actually literally did that in the middle of his video. Anyway, whatever. So, um, so yeah, if we lose to the Jets, we fall down to the ninth spot. Okay, can't lose to the Jets. Week 16. If we lose to the Saints, that drops us one spot out of the playoffs down to the eighth seed. Okay, can't do that. Let's go week 17. Lose to the Titans. That drops us down to the ninth. Okay. Ironically enough, that's, but see, look what just happened though, because obviously everything from week 15 is, you know, randomized and then I made my picks, but look at that. If we lose to the Titans, not only do we drop out of the playoffs to the ninth spot, but then the Titans actually move up to the number one seed <laughs> from being number three. That's really weird. That's really weird. Anyway, okay, so no, we can't lose to Tennessee. And week 18, can we lose to the Patriots? No, because then that drops us down to the number one seed. Oh, I guess it's not really. I guess it's not really that weird actually, because then they would probably have tiebreakers. Oh yeah, well they would have a better conference. Okay, so it's not that weird. I was tripping. Anyway, my eyes were fooling me. Um, but anyway, so basically, if the Dolphins want to uh, make it to the playoffs they want they need to win out so now let's actually take a look at this upcoming week so we're going to go back to this other one where the no picks have been decided obviously dolphins do have to win right so we'll start with that but let's go ahead and take a look so like i said generally speaking we're going to want the uh, division leaders to win so you would and you want the 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 5 through 12 teams to lose so in this upcoming week when it when we're talking about teams that we're rooting for we want KC to win because we want them to secure their division and that will also then give the fifth seed the Chargers a loss now we have the Browns and the Raiders up next this one's tough, and especially with the Browns potentially having so many guys out, the Browns could end up losing this, but that actually would not... Um, the Browns could lose this to Vegas, but that actually would not be... Well, as you can see, it would actually bump us up to the 12th spot, so it would have us go one spot up, but I was going to say either way, honestly, either way we're going to move up one spot because of this matchup, right? But I would say that we want the the Browns to win, though, overall because of two reasons. One, they are the higher seed, and we can that can immediately make us jump the, Raider, the Raiders. But more importantly, they actually have tiebreakers over us. So the sooner we can get the Raiders behind us, the better. Now... When it comes to New England and um, Indy, we do want New England to win because division leader, and then that bumps Indy down to 10, right? Gives us an opportunity to pass them. It doesn't really matter for Houston and Jacksonville, so it's a toss-up, let's say Houston. Here for Tennessee and Pitt, we should be rooting for the Titans. We want them to... to uh, uh, 
cement their division leadership and then also drop the Steelers, right? Because as you can see, that would then move the Dolphins ahead of the Steelers. If the Steelers were to win, then that would leave us in 12th in 12th place at that point, right? Whatever. So we want the Steelers to win that. When it comes to Cincy and Denver, uh, I would say probably Cincy here. And then that would draw and then that would put us above Denver. If Denver won, then it wouldn't move us up at all. It would get Cincy closer to us, but it would it would leave us at eleventh. So yes, so we want we want Cincy to win that and then that would get us up to tenth. Buffalo and Carolina, you want Buffalo to lose because that's a that's an NFC team. So you actually, no matter what, you and also since they're not the division leader anymore, you want Carolina to somehow manage to beat Buffalo. And then you want Green Bay to beat the Ravens. Or no, no, you actually would want the Ravens to beat Green Bay. Because then it makes that division less competitive and then we just need to eliminate the Bengals as opposed to having to uh, potentially eliminate the Bengals and the Ravens from wild card contention. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm actually going to wrap it up. I'm trying to you know make it a little bit more efficient and so on and so forth and go through a couple different aspects of it. So I hope you like how I've tried to improve it. Taking some notes from Doug too, so shout out to Doug. Appreciate you, homie, and love your stuff. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. That is how the Dolphins can make it to the playoffs. Again, as of right now, it is basically just they have to win out. They have to win out. They have to win out because almost, you know, there are very few. Now, again, to be clear, they're down the line, depending on how these games play out down the stretch, you know, if, for example, if over the next few weeks... The division leaders, the top four teams, continue to win out, and then all those other teams basically lose, and things go perfectly for us. There actually is a world in which we probably could make it in at 9-8. and eight. But the odds of that happening are super low. So the Dolphins still do need to win out, and general rule of thumb, they need the division leaders to continue to win everything from seeds 5 to 12, because we're currently the 13th seed, needs to lose with, again, maybe a, a potential little bit of disparity, and I showed you a little bit of that for this upcoming week and what we're going to be rooting for for this upcoming week. So with that, I am going to wrap it up. Before I do, make sure you check out the Rave On Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all of your sports, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, college, whatever you like, they got it, and they're looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chats with other fans and content creators like myself. Look for the links to that in the description box. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro, as well as Instagram at Dolphins underscore with underscore Dylan. And with that, I'm out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.